here we're using the image to canvas so just popping up and uh, we've already started new scenes so we're just popping up a new image and i've decided i want to work 19 20 10 80 and we get it to the camera Here is, uh, unfortunately, it'll still take a while recording it in double time, but this is my basic workup for, for painting something is to start with a grayscale, usually about 50% value. And I toggle back and forth on the D key, the multiply and the add, and I, I, I change my values based on how I'm feeling uh, I need to affect it but you can at least get your landmarks worked out first before you gloss them over and start covering things back up. In this, in this one, I'm going to work on two layers. So first layer is just gonna be what would be an underpainting, which is just your values. Uh, same things done in oil painting and acrylics a lot, a lot of times, we're working with an underpainting first. I am using a reference loosely just for uh, landmarks, but I'm not wanting to follow exactly what's going on. So I'm not trying to show you what, what the reference is, but if, if you need to, you can use a new window from the top header header panel and you can get your reference set there and that new window will stay on top. I learned that from watching some grease pencil stuff. Again, I'm just toggling back and forth, multiply and add. And every once in a while, I need to go back to mix to put down the original color of uh, the, mid the mid tone. But during this session, my brain kind of just I don't know, I, I had a, a basically a brain fart and I couldn't remember the shortcut. So I had to keep bringing up the, the, the tool over on the side. And for anybody that's interested, it's an Alt D is the actual shortcut. For some reason I kept pressing Shift Alt D and I couldn't get anything to work right. The main thing is to fill out the forms with a large brush. Uh, we don't, I don't normally go in with a lot of detail right off the bat, except for maybe like right here when I'm trying to suggest the eye and get a better feel for the personality of the character. But even then, like I said, you, you really need to use at least some references so you've got a handle on what reality is. The main thing to also remember is anytime a, a value changes, that's that's pretty much showing that there's a difference in plane, like a there's an you're either building an edge or you're smoothing out something that is is uh, bringing you know coming forward or sinking back because light's going to hit things that project outward and shadow's going to cast down into something that's receding or is going to be underneath something that's above. So you really you really want to keep track of what you're doing with your lights and darks. But here's a piece of advice I'd give to anybody that's wanting to start up. If you're a painter, you paint. So if something goes wrong, just repaint it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to be sloppy. Just get it. Just do what you need to do. Because you won't know until you try. Like a, a large portion of this is looking at it. And because I intentionally didn't want to put in the eye socket for the other side, it, it still bugs me a little bit. But I've got to concentrate on getting the form for the, the face worked out with where it is exposed. 
And then sometimes what I do is I'll back up. Even after I've built this middle range, I'll back up and I'll actually paint with a much larger brush and deal with a large area and then start cutting into it again. So it's a back and forth. Incidentally, with uh, this this portion of the image to, to to camera, what we need to, I need to let you know is that first one that says new image, that's bringing up the pop up window of the 2D image editor, creating the base canvas. There, um, it's not necessary to save it to disk to get started. You can actually even not even title it. But set your dimensions and once you go to the image panel in that editor you can choose to create your canvas and camera and it'll bring it in you want to be working in a, a fresh scene with that new scene button it's on the new version that's I've renamed it uh, uh, what you call it the draw to paint scene so you want to make sure that you've set up a clean scene with nothing else in the in the, the workspace so you don't don't get the computer confused but if you have a problem there's another two buttons there um, you can set if you've if you've accidentally deleted the image plane and the camera and you need to bring it back in if the image is already still active in your image editor then there in the 3d space there you can press camera and and canvas Sorry, cam canvas and camera from it from it from active, and it'll regenerate. And if you accidentally d delete your camera for some reason, just make sure you've selected your canvas in uh, texture, you know, in, in your texture paint mode, and you can press the add camera, and it'll a add a new camera to replace the other one. The main thing is is that the old add-on for draw to paint and even before that with the easy draw was it was always using the built-in or sorry the the external add-on for images as planes and recently with 4.2 Campbell Barton made it to where there's a, an inbuilt add-on for that but uh, because I'm stubborn I wanted to learn how to make my own and with some you know deep reading and such I found out how to get it to so where it's it's in the operator itself so that it brings in a basic plane I want to change up what my material is for this so here I am making adjustments so that I can I can render this correctly it's got an emission so I'm adding a layer in on top so that's that's a, a new thing where if you have your image node selected, you can go up to node and create a new image node based on the same size. But here I've got to change the alpha value. So there we go. We should be able to start coloring now. Now I start I start messing up because I start trying to, to set color in the brush, but I need to do it in the compositor and the or in the shader. So here we are. Now I'm finally getting the colors to come in and I'm not sure exactly how far I'm leaning in on the yellows and oranges and and that's another thing I I don't like to just copy photographs I like to get some weird uh, color combinations and I, I kind of imagine okay wh where where's where's there mostly going to be uh, blood to the face and then what kind of lighting are we doing so I start playing around and immediately with the green, I start thinking about the Joker and I kind of, I'm laughing the whole time I'm doing this and I'm not really being very serious, but, uh, another, another point to make is that right now the reload button only works on the existing canvas because of what it's named. So I'm going to have to find a way to get it to still work with each of the images involved or whichever one's the active without tying it to the name so I think I got too 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 uh 
hyper focused on on the, the name with the suffix canvas so i'll have to see what happens okay here's a, here's another tip if you're wanting to clean up an area from the color that you've put in for for set for color shift over to a, a white you know with with the no um no no color in it painting color in with white will actually strip it back down to your grayscale here i've actually decided to go back into after i've got the color on going back to my initial grayscale and i'm adding a lot more details and a lot more uh highlights to the hair and i'm, I'm just seeing more things in my head as i'm going so i decided to go backwards And then I realized I left, left out some details. You don't have to have a lot of detail everywhere in the painting, but you do have to have enough to where you sell the point. So wherever the focal point is, you want to have the most detail. Here I go try to add some darks back into the structure. The cool thing is, is that because this is a separate layer, I can decide to save this one and then make a copy and then disable this one and go in and, and just redo the entire thing. And I think I've, I've done that on several projects before. Okay, the save all, pack all. If it's not saved to disk, it'll pack it into the file. And that, that'll be a good way to save your project as you go without having to worry about losing something. <laughs> 